this is a story about my struggle with infertility. I've been wanting to make this video for a really long time. I was encouraged by a lot of people that infertility isn't something you speak about, it's taboo, and if you're going through it, you go through it silently, and you suffer silently with your spouse or whoever you're dealing with it with, your family members, friends, but it's not something that should be publicly spoken about. And I have seen many people on YouTube talk about infertility and their struggles and it creates this community of people that um, are just there for each other and can understand what they're going through. I mean, you can explain it to your parents, you can explain it to friends who have children and they sympathize, um, empathize, whatever, they, they, they try their best to understand, but they don't really understand what you're going through and what it's like to be wanting something so badly and just being in a healthy place in your life and being so ready to start a family and it just doesn't happen for you. You try all of these things and just nothing works and it's just hard for people to understand. So I appreciate this community that's come together, women, families, they just come together in this community and are able to openly speak about something that a lot of people go through. I just wanna share my story with you. I made a list of everything just so I don't forget anything. In August of 2016, that is when my husband and I had officially decided to start our family. We had been married for three years and we just wanted to make sure we bought a house, that we had a nice home to raise a family in, made sure we had full-time jobs and we had already graduated school and we were ready to go. Like That's when we were finally ready. Like This is the time that we want to start our family and start having children. Um, and we had always wanted kids. We just wanted to bring them into the best situation possible. We tried for nine months and like at that point, nine months doesn't sound like a long time, but we really thought like, oh gosh, we're gonna hit a year and then what are we gonna do? Like we're still not pregnant and so it felt like a lifetime. And then in May of 2017, I got a positive pregnancy test. Okay, today is 8 May 2017 and I just got home from work and um, my period's been late for two days. Uh, kind of normal, my period's on and off, whatever, but Oh my God, I just got a positive pregnancy test. I'm like kind of freaking out. I don't even know if you can see it because it's so faint. Look, oh my God, I'm freaking out. Chitesha's not home yet. I'm so happy. Oh my God. This is our ninth month trying to do this and I got a winner. Oh my God, I'm freaking out. I cannot wait for Chitesha to get home. Okay, I'm so excited. Um, my period had been late for like two days and I really didn't think I was. I actually wasn't even thinking about it. That was really the month I kind of just like let go and I was like, well, you know, I don't, it's not happening. So let me and Chitesh just enjoy each other and, and you know, um, spend time together and um, make this a really relaxing month. And that was the time it happened. And I know it's crazy because people always say like, if you just relax and you know, it'll happen. You just need to take it easy. But I don't necessarily think that's true after everything I've been through, but um, at least in that in that time frame for us, it ended up working out. <laughs> yeah, it was a really exciting time for us, and we were totally ready for it and ready to have a baby, and it was amazing. And then in, I think towards the end of May, right before I hit six weeks, um, I started having spotting, and <clears throat> it was, for me, I knew something was wrong. I, I, ha I felt it in my gut that something was wrong. Um, I told my husband about it and I told one of my friends about it and my family about it and they were like, no, it's normal. Women have spotting all the time in pregnancy, like just don't worry about it right now. But I just knew something was wrong. So that had happened like over the weekend. Then I think it was Monday morning, me and my husband were getting ready for work and the bleeding was still happening. Not really heavy, but it was getting heavier and I, I got ready for work. I had come all the way downstairs, grabbed all my stuff, was walking out the front door, and I just broke down in tears. And I knew, I just knew at that point, this is not good. This is not good news. So I went back upstairs, pretty much collapsed into my husband's arms, and told him, I think this is it. I think we're miscarrying. And, um,. We called our doctor and called the hospital just to see. I mean, we didn't know, and now I know if you're miscarrying, 
you might as well just do it at home because there's not really much that a doctor can do for you of course call your doctor and you find out that information for yourself and they'll tell you what to do so i my husband took me to the er that morning and um they confirmed i was i think like a couple centimeters dilated and i was miscarrying so um it was one of the most difficult times in my life like i said when i mean if you've miscarried before i know there are plenty of women who have you know i am one in four one in four women will miscarry and it's tragic and heartbreaking and i think no matter what stage of pregnancy you are it's really just like the hope and expectation you have for this future baby that you're going to have and you just make all these plans with your spouse and um you're just ready to move forward and you you pick out names like we already have our names picked out for our kids i mean it's it's a it's a really heartbreaking experience and one of the most difficult me and my husband have ever been through and i took it really hard um i was in a lot of pain they gave me painkillers, but that's pretty much all they could do and sent me home. And so I stayed home for a week from work and just dealt with it at home with my husband and alone too. I needed that alone time. I cried a lot. I was really depressed and it was very difficult. So that was kind of the... <clears throat> so... My OBGYN suggested, since we had already conceived, we wanted to get right back into trying again. And so we started to try again immediately. Month after month, we were sure it was going to work because, hey, if you get pregnant once, why would it be difficult to get pregnant again? And so we were pretty sure um, we would get pregnant again. And we tried for another eight months naturally to get pregnant with no luck. Um, just it wasn't working out we did everything I was tracking ovulation you know I was doing everything that I was supposed to be doing and it just wasn't happening and so our doctor our OBGYN suggested that I try Clomid I didn't know at the time I already knew that I was ovulating and Clomid is just supposed to like boost your ovulation or get you to ovulate if you don't ovulate and I was already ovulating so I should have known right there that that was not gonna solve our problems we really needed further testing done but that's not what we did so we just straight went into Clomid and we did it for three months and nothing worked it was just a crazy medication because my mood swings were all over the place I was feeling all kinds of ways I mean you can look up the side effects of Clomid I pretty much had everything and um, that was a really challenging time for us too because we were just like ready like when we heard about Clomid we're like all right this is what's going to do it and we were so excited and um three months of it and it just didn't work so then our OBGYN um told us to go to a fertility specialist and we were just I think at that time my mind was just like what is happening you know like I've, I've been pregnant already um you know we're on this Clomid stuff and that should have worked and like I don't know what's going on and I, as much as I wanted answers I also needed a break and my husband needed a break too and so we kind of took a little bit of time off um so we started the Clomid in January February March we took it for three months um and I think we waited another three months before going to a fertility specialist so uh, we went to see them in June and that's when they did all the testing you get your HSG testing done you get your semen analysis done you get everything all the tests done that you're supposed to get done um, and all of our uh, information came back what we were diagnosed with so this is kind of when um, I really had like a mental breakdown I I was just in so much shock um, you know I'm 25 years old at the time and um i'm just thinking like really like this happens to a 25 year old i didn't know that it could affect you know you think infertility only affects 35 and up 40 years old whatever and at that point is when you start experiencing things going wrong with your body so basically we were diagnosed with three different things so i was diagnosed with blocked fallopian tubes both of them were blocked when they did the hsg which really blew my mind and i that's really what kind of like threw me over the edge i was just so confused and angry and you know i had conceived before and so it was just a very confusing time for me and then my husband was diagnosed with male factor infertility and he was 29 years old at the time and so it was just a confusing time it was very confusing for us and to top it all off um my doctor told me i was also diagnosed with low ovarian reserve so basically 
very nonchalantly was told you have the ovaries of a 40 year old woman basically um my egg reserve is low so all of that combined i mean even without the blocked fallopian tubes the male factor infertility and my low ovarian reserve gave us a very very low percentage of conceiving and then to put in uh the blocked fallopian tubes that gave us like a one percent chance of conceiving naturally so it was devastating and heartbreaking and even talking about it like i thought when i filmed i would cry about it i can't cry about it it's just been i've it's too many tears i've done enough crying and it's been enough heartbreak i still feel it it still hurts and it's still confusing to me but you know this is just what we have been dealt so we have to keep moving forward so basically our doctor told us at that point um IVF was going to be our only option unless I wanted to have surgery to unblock my tubes Which is not guaranteed at all. I could go in and have surgery be put under anesthesia Have to be put you know breathing tube in all like the crazy stuff and I've never had surgery before and um, It would be pretty intense to get done and also no guarantee that they could actually fix anything There's no guarantee that they could unblock my tubes. They don't really know what's causing it So I don't really have answers for that and they told us that IVF was our only option and I Can't lie. I was angry when I heard that um, IVF sounded like a swear word to me at the time like you're just not supposed to say that and I I was not ready to hear that that IVF would be our only option and then my mind just world down this tunnel of how are we going to afford IVF and how are we going to be able to do all of this and get the shots and the medication and doctor's appointments every other day like it was just a lot and a whirlwind of emotions and mostly just anger I was just really angry with myself I was very disappointed in myself and my body and felt ashamed and um, I was just disappointed in myself and I was angry at God I didn't understand why this had to happen to me and my husband i feel you know this doesn't justify anything but i just felt at the time like we're good people we don't do anything wrong we're not perfect but you know we we do our best and we have prepared this life to involve a little tiny human and to take care of another life and a, a child a baby to love and to nurture and we were so ready and i just didn't understand now like our whole Set of dreams we had just came crumbling down in a split second and it was it was just really really challenging and you know for any of you that are going through infertility i'm sure you can relate and understand like when you get that news your mind no matter what you think you prepare yourself for to hear those answers about yourself to be diagnosed with those things to be told you have no chance one percent chance is no chance of conceiving naturally it's what it feels like and um it's just it's hard it's really hard to hear that so after a lot of thinking on it um talking about it with my husband and our families obviously praying about it a lot um we came to the decision that we were going to do ivf because that's how bad we want a baby and a family so that's our only option that's what we're going to do we started our ivf in august to september of 2018 so this year and um August is basically when I had started like on the birth control and then into September is when I started doing the stimulation drugs and had to inject myself and I'll insert some clips so you guys can see how all of that went down but You did good. That was a lot better than yesterday. It actually didn't hurt that bad. I didn't even ice. Whoa. Oh. Enzo Katuru. Shots complete. Jace, your thoughts? Day three. Yeah, give your thoughts. I'm not ready. Beast. Beast? Yeah. Kaelin's a beast? Yeah, it's not, not for me. It's not the life. Should I stop recording? Yes, yeah. please. please. Yeah, IVF. It was just crazy. Uh, not anything we ever expected to do in our whole lives and it was an experience a stressful experience definitely took an emotional toll on both of us and um, I'm just thankful we had very supportive families and very supportive friends um, that did know about it and that were there for us 
basically went through the whole process of IVF. I won't get into all the details right now, but by the end of all the stimulation drugs and everything and all the doctor's appointments, ultrasounds and everything, um, we did our egg retrieval and they ended up getting 13 eggs. And so the next day they called me and I had nine mature eggs out of the 13 and six of them ended up fertilizing so that was really good news um we were really happy with those numbers and that's a good chance of you know being able to have a full grown embryo at the end of the five days to do the transfer so the embryo transfer day came we were driving to our fertility clinic and they called well a doctor called me not my doctor another doctor called me and said none of the embryos of the six had grown um, past day three basically and they canceled our transfer that day oh my gosh I can't even explain that was just like why that's really what I thought I was like really why does this have to happen to us and why why now like we've come this far and I feel like I put my body under so much stress and now at this point you're telling me okay no transfer because the embryos didn't grow so what happened what went wrong again why is this just another thing that has to go wrong in our situation it was just why god why is this happening to us and I mean we've struggled enough haven't we and that's that's just what happened and um so day five went by no transfer they said they would wait till day six so day six they called me while we were on the way and i'm thinking okay this is done like our cycle failed and we're we're out for good um i said that to my husband and in the back of my mind i was praying to god give us a miracle please god just give us a miracle embryo that just makes it so that we can just do this one time and have a chance and um, I got a call while we were on our way there from an, that same doctor I had talked to the day before. And she said that five of the embryos had not grown at all and they were going to be discarded because they had, uh, well now I know they had some fragmentation, other things, whatever. The point is they didn't grow and um, were not were not viable embryos. And then she told me one of them had grown enough, just enough. Um, it wasn't a full blastocyst, but it was like the stage under that, uh, morula, I think they call it. And, um, so that was our miracle embryo and they were able to go through with the transfer on day six. So I didn't have my hopes up too high, but you know, it wasn't opening. It was a window. Um, and so it was still exciting and you know, there's still a chance that we could get pregnant. And so it was, you know, it was really exciting. Um, so anyway, those two weeks had gone by. We did the transfer, and then you kind of just have to wait. Like a normal pregnancy, you know, if you conceive naturally, you have the two-week wait. So we waited for two weeks. I had been taking tests. Um, not when we first did the transfer. I waited like a week, and then I started taking tests. I was like, okay, it has to show a positive at some point now. And I know you're supposed to wait, right, until you go get your blood test. I couldn't wait. So I was taking pregnancy tests, negative, 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 negative. And, um... Yeah, so after the two weeks had gone by, I was still getting negatives up to the day of our blood test. And so I knew we were out. I knew at that point it wasn't going to happen. And we went in for the blood test. I got the call from our nurse that our cycle had failed. So um, another devastating part of it. But like I said, at this point, we had just gone through so much that I was just like, well, it's expected. You know, what? obviously it's going to happen to us. All bad things happen to us. And that's kind of where my headspace was. Um... So yeah, cycle failed and no embryos frozen um, to use for a frozen transfer cycle. Um, yeah, so we were kind of just stuck. That brings me to now. That happened a month ago um, that we were told that it failed. And this is kind of where we are now. And our doctor said we could start IVF again right away if we wanted to, but it's about to be November and I really just wanted to enjoy the holidays with our families and I didn't want to have to stress about giving myself injections again and stress about going to doctor's appointments and I just wanted to relax and enjoy our holidays and enjoy time with my husband and um, so that's kind of where we are now and I think we're planning to start up again in January so Really, I just wanted to share my story because I know there are a multitude of women that go through infertility and it is not talked about enough. And I don't think I can change that personally by myself, but I think it's a start if we start to speak up 
about what we go through and the struggles that we face and you know getting pregnant <laughs> it's not easy it's not easy and you shouldn't blame yourself for that it's I I went through a really long phase of blaming myself and you know I remember after our miscarriage I just apologized to my husband over and over and over again just telling him how sorry I was that my body failed us and that my body couldn't handle a pregnancy and I'm just I was so overwhelmed with guilt that it was all my fault. Everything that was going on was my fault. The infertility afterwards, having to do IVF, not being able to conceive naturally, I was just in the blame game. And I'm so thankful because I have a wonderful husband. Chitesh is my rock and my support and my strength. And he has just been so good to me and so supportive. And um, he stayed really strong for me throughout this whole process. And I am very thankful for you, babe. I love you. Um, so I just want to say that <sighs> infertility is not taboo. Infertility is not taboo. It is something we should talk about more. And I hope to build a community of women who are very brave and can talk about infertility and talk about their struggles and share their stories and encourage others. And I hope that my story encourages someone else too. And I'm happy to share more about what we're going to go through in 2019 in our upcoming uh, fertility journey and our baby journey. And um, I'm praying for the best and I know God will pull us through. And a song that I listen to a lot that really encouraged me um, as we were going through all of this and especially around the time of our miscarriage is Even If by Mercy Me. Um, it's a really beautiful song. Some of the lyrics are, I know you're able and I know you can save through the fire with your mighty hand but even if you don't my hope is in you alone they say it only takes a little faith to move a mountain good thing a little faith is all i have right now but god when you choose to leave mountains unmovable give me the strength to be able to sing it is well with my soul and no matter what we go through me and my husband we choose to have faith and I know God is going to pull us through the situation. He always has. And I know he always will. And I just hope that brings some encouragement to you also. And I pray that my story lifts you up. Um, it's not a happy ending right now. But I'm hopeful that it will be. And I hope it encourages you. Uh, thanks so much for watching. And um, I will try my best to continue sharing. And what our future holds for us. Thanks guys. Good luck.